Hey guys, welcome to my video on the Adelaide 500. I attended Saturday and Sunday, and as an Adelaide local, I caught the bus for the first day, and then my mate drove me and we got Uber as well, which is not the cheap way of doing it like, you, like you're supposed to. So yeah, the Saturday, I, ha I had my ticket, I went by myself for the first half of the day, and then I joined up with my mate and uh, spent a bit of the time showing him around what I'd seen at the Adelaide 500. I have been there several times before as a, as a kid and uh, also in 2020 and 2019. This was the video that I did for people on YouTube who might be interested in going to the Adelaide 500 and showing sort of the fan experience just like it did for my Tail and Bend video. So, if it wasn't driven home hard enough. It's the last ever round for Holden at Supercars. So there's lots of really cool old Holdens driving past. Um, all sorts of different ones. So got a bit, bit of footage of it. It's pretty impressive really the number of them. Cause it, you see them from time to time but this was definitely a special day for it. And this is me waiting for the bus as well, so this is just, <laughs> this is this is what I saw on the way to the 500, is all the cars. Alright, this is my walk to the track. Going down Angus Street. Um, you can see I finally made it to the gate that, I've, that I was going to go to. Uh, and I wasn't sure until I actually started hearing the loudspeakers that I was getting close. Because I just followed what some people that I was walking with had told me to do. So I just kept walking and then found myself at the end of the street and boom, there I was. Alright, so it's st st first thing in the gate you see Wakefield Street. And uh, I don't know if you're allowed to use the toilet, it might be for officials or something. But, I mean, it would say if you weren't, so. And here's Scott McLaughlin straight away and go, alright, this is. You heard his voice all weekend. There wasn't, there wasn't too many times where you didn't hear Scott McLaughlin. What I was disappointed was he didn't see him. I thought, I thought he was supposed to be one of us, but no, nah, he's one of them. So there it is, the beautiful Santa Chicane. And I think it's Aussie Racing Cars starting its first race of the Sunday. And this is a great spot to watch all the racing from. Aussie Racing Cars always put on a good, a good show. But you don't get as close up to the Santa Chicane as you think you might, but... At least there's a good enough amount of shade, so it wasn't too bad. Here I am, walking a bit further in, trying to get up to the main straight. You can see there's some of the screens following the path to get in to, to go across the bridge. Um, and Adelaide 500 has always been a fair bit of a walk, even, out, even when I was a kid it was always a walk. Um, but when I was a kid I had a lot more energy now. I just want to go find a spot to stand Here it is the main straight it looked really nice the way they've sort of done up this area But I wish there was some better shade and maybe some smarter positioning and things But it was definitely a good uh, good thing That uh, gap in the fence there is where uh, me and my mate walked out and for the track invasion onto the track and celebrate the podium. But yeah, you can you can see everything. It's a great view of the trip of the pit straight. I'm walking a bit further. 
seen a few things. So this is after I've just crossed the bridge, past the paddock and over the next bridge. Um, this is the this is an area I thought I'd probably go to more often, but um, I tried an Ed whiskey and it tasted like shit, so I didn't actually want to have any more of it. Um, here's the airtime FX stuff, which I didn't see too much of, but I think once they got going it was really good. It's one of those things they usually do take a bit of time to you get warmed up, you don't really know when things are supposed to happen. It's definitely an all weekend event, you definitely want to be there all the time. The BMX, BMX stuff was great, just watch them do their thing. I couldn't do any of that. Those guys are really good. Yeah, you can see my water bottle there. This is the Brody Kostecki supercar that's been turned it. It's actually a, a ride car. You can see it's got two seats in it. So uh, that's definitely really cool. I couldn't believe that it was actually just it was a real car, real race car. Here's me standing in line for the signing session on the Saturday. Keep going, more signing session. You can see, you can see Tim Slate at the end there, in the blue. So I got to talk to Mark Winterbottom and Scott Pye, and yeah, we had a lot of. Yeah, it was a good time. And yeah, see lots of different parts of the. So this is the karting bit I thought was interesting. They actually had some information that you could read and there's some information you could read about the Formula V which is apparently supposed to be the cheaper thing in motorsport. Um, so you can see I've grabbed some pamphlets and you can see a close up of the carts. I don't know if I'd ever want to own a cart or run a cart but I was definitely interested in what they were saying about the Formula V which is that it's supposed to be one of the most cost efficient um, forms of motorsport. So, yeah. I think, um, I think that one's the one that won the championship as well. The white and purple one, they said. So, definitely something to look into. You can hear one of the GT cars has had a crash. <laughs> We're going, wait, what? So we'll go up close and have a good look, because you always want to have a look when someone's had a crash. Especially like a track like Adelaide's great for sometimes you just see wrecked cars and you'll see uh, you'll see a fair few cars in this video. Um, just just the stuff you see when you're walking around enjoying the 500. So people bring in their chairs, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, one of the GT cars, I think it's a KFC car, right? But I didn't notice, you watching the actual broadcast, there's another car to the right which has also had a crash. So I didn't even know until I watched the broadcast and I went, oh my god, there's another car. Because the commentators weren't talking about the KFC car, they were talking about the other one. There's me saying, you can't even see any flags to let, them, to let the drivers know and they're still going a decent speed. There's more of the closer to the hairpin there you can see that's the hairpin right there where those grandstands are um, there's the pedal pre cars the little amon pedal pre um, which I didn't get to see I think they said that it was on the Sunday or Saturday but I never saw it uh, that would have been good to see that that's the thing about the Adelaide 500 there's so much that you'll, you'll miss out on and it's probably the same at Townsville and Gold Coast there's just so much of it you sort of, you really want to be there all weekend to really soak it up and enjoy everything. So we've got the dragsters. This is actually an, an official event on the actual list. I was just walking around and then I heard them starting up an engine, so I thought, gee, I want to go see that. And it's a cool car as well, the BL. So. And it took them a little while to get going with it as well. So here, here I'm going to the support paddocks, which is, I love the support paddocks, you see so much, and it's so raw. So, yeah, we see the S5000s, they've got the Hoosier tyres, and you'll see 
uh, when I get closer, Gary Rogers, just deep in thought, and I waved at him, and he didn't wave back. Um, you see him sitting on the chair there. He's just looking out into space, and I've grabbed my bottle and I waved at him, and he didn't even see me. I've actually got a photo from 2019 that shows it. Maybe I should have stayed and had a better look at those cars, but all the Gary Rogers boys. Um, the S5000s apparently impressed in uh, at Adelaide. They had a few changes to make the racing better, and apparently they were very impressive, according to the guys on the Driver's Seat podcast, or the radio show. Apparently, apparently they get upset if you call it a podcast. There's, um, what's his face? Um... Who's the famous former F1 driver? Oh, I can't even remember his name, but I'll put it on the screen so you know. And uh, that's his car right there. We've sort of put it, I think you can see it, but I'm actually seeing this sideways on some of the views because for some reason my phone doesn't want to show everything the right way. Morrow, hang on, is that like related to early Morrow? Uh, yeah, so this 5000 is a different cool cars, and Balo was in, was uh, sponsoring a bunch of them as well, which I thought was very good. You can see Super 2, uh, which it's always great to see them. I got to see Kurt Kostecki's car getting fixed up on the Saturday at the 2020 Adelaide 500, and I saw the crash and had a chat with the... I was actually out of, at the signing session for the Supercars guys when that happened, when the Jack Perkins Kurt Kostecki crash happened. And so I saw the boys working late into the night fixing up that car, the Kirk Kostecki car. Um, so yeah, so lots of great cars. I think you can see Thomas Maxwell. He's, um, you can see on the right-hand side there, that might be him. But I actually don't know what the guys look like. Um, so I was just walking by and looking at everything and doing as much as I could to enjoy it. And... Um, I walked past, um, no, I didn't walk past, Ange Mazuris walked past me, um, and I think Ange Mazuris, like, I, I really want to see him succeed, he's a good, he's a, he seems like such a nice, friendly guy, and he's talented, but he's a bit, he needs some real nurturing, and he probably needs some time at Norwell Motorplex. Kai Allen, who lost the unlosable, uh, <laughs> could not believe it. He's crashed and just handed it to Brad Vaughan, who's, ne- who's going to be racing for Tickford next year. So, there's Aaron Seaton, and there's the Gummisall, um Scott McLaughlin car, which I saw a video about it. It was pretty good. Uh, so I turned around and go, wait, where's, it? where's Andrew Azuris? You can go further down, you see the Super 3 cars, some more of the Super 3 cars. I think, is it the first one you see? Is the AU, no, the second one you see, is the, uh, the bike off AU. Uh, and you've got the Gary Collins, old Jack Daniels, Kelly Racing car. Uh, it's nice seeing those old cars going around with the same old livery. I don't know if I've seen that one too much. That old Gary Rogers car. Uh, Carnivore. They're doing the, the meat stuff. Um, they actually have some nice food. I had something to eat there on the Sunday. Snowy Caravans. I've actually got a Dario dealership near my house. So it was cool to see that that was actually... Because they have, they've got all the Snowy Rivers caravans, and I'm going, what's up with that? How come they've got so many Snowy Rivers? And well, apparently they're the, like the major dealer or something. There's the other side. You can see I've just got in the uh, the paddock area. You get you have to get your paddock pass to get there. And then you know, across the, um, I've managed to get through to the through to the paddock. And the hardest bit. I pro- what I really need is some sort of strap across my chest to stick a camera on it, like a GoPro, because I almost bowled over Thomas Randall by accident. I wasn't looking where I was going, and I was, um, I was just trying to film stuff for the video, 
and I was looking around because that's what you do, there's so much to see and you're just so excited and it was, uh, yeah, could have been bad but I, I didn't actually hit him, he just walked straight past me and sort of frightened me a little bit. But yeah, obviously lots of people in the in the pits. Didn't cost too much to get in the paddock. I remember in, uh, I think it used to cost a lot more in uh, 2020. I think it used to cost $50. I think this time it cost $20. It's a lot better. Um, lots of, you'll see a lot of personnel. you see all the tyres getting warmed up. Um, there's so much to really enjoy. Um... And I'd love to get closer, more involved with the team and have a bigger membership package and things like that and get a chance to walk around the garage one day. But uh, that might not happen next year. Yeah. Pretty much the same old supercars paddock, really. That's what it's like. You can see my water bottle and... Having wa you drinking water pretty much all weekend, drinking heaps of water, because it was it was hot. Thirty three degrees apparently on both days. Um, the Sunday felt a lot hotter, but and you're coming in early in the morning just to soak up as much as you can. I, think I got there at like nine o'clock or something. Um, see all the BJR boys, but I'm making my way to Premier Racing where Jimmy Golding drives. And uh, when I got there, you could see Peter, Peter's, like, I think they say Peter Zuberus, but Peter Zuberus, whatever you want to call him, he was uh, he was definitely there and he was always talking to someone. See some of the Team 18 boys getting ready for the next session. And uh, after I filmed my bit at the Premier Racing uh, pits, I turned around and I saw Jimmy Golding, but I didn't say hi. There's a lot of people with their corporate passes as well, so the corporate stuff is huge at the Adelaide 500. There's so many people with all their gold passes, and I don't know if the gold pass is really worth it. I didn't get it, like, so I couldn't really tell you, but yeah. Wanted to get a bit of a close up look and. You can see Peter Zubris over there talking to, talking to someone. This is me trying to oh yeah, finish my phone. Uh, is this the Gen 3 cars? The first time I've actually seen them in person driving around. Everyone's having a good look, loving it. It was the Chevy, the Mustang, can't be too far away. Does it have a different sound? There's the Bosch thing. They had like a pit. Um, you could do a challenge with the with the pits, a pit stop challenge, which I didn't do, but I saw it. Um, this nice bloke let me sit down there and have my chips. And uh, yeah, just enough for practice, but his family came back, so I got kicked out <laughs> to go find a new spot. So I went to the hairpin. Um, I don't remember what happened to my food. I think I finished it eventually. I might have been walking around with it for a while. I think I finished it at, um, at center some Velo sponsored helicopter rides you could have done but I didn't look into it. I wanted to do it but the, again it's such a festival there's so much to do and it was hot and all you want to do is sit down um, but you know I definitely wanted to go and check out everything as much as I could. This is where I sat down for lunch. Oh that's right 
this is where I sat down and finished my food. Um, so yeah, just a nice little quiet spot. And yeah, enjoying things. Get back to Senna and uh, watch whatever's next. Well, it must be the shootout or something. Yeah. My hairy legs. Um, I put. I've just put on some sunscreen, so I'm actually uh, just waiting twenty minutes. It says before you can, you're good to go. So I was just uh, being sun safe, which you got to do. Yeah, it's once you had a bit of a scare with sunburn you don't want to don't want to be in a bad state this is a good spot this one in the staircase um just so close up to the cars it's crazy and you get to see the way that they attack the corners um, so yeah. and obviously the s5000 has got v8s in them so they sound really good but you just sort of wish the racing was better and i think they, the categories need to do a better job at selling the show as well so that's something that they really could push harder on um, so this is where the concerts are going to be taking place um, I think I must have met up with my mate uh, might have been a little bit later after this but yeah that's where the concerts happened I'm not showing any footage of it because if you wanted to see the concerts you would have gone there's all the Holdens that's where they all ended up all the ones that I saw on the way up and uh, in this particular area I walked past both times on the way out after the concerts here we got Bartels Road I believe so it's the Super 2 cars Kai Allen it's not a great spot to watch it but you can see them at speed when they're really going and it'll be the last time you see Super 3 in uh, the way that it is at the moment. Next year it'll be different. There's a shady spot while I'm waiting for my mate. And it's a, I mean, it's a great old tree I was under. And there was this random bloke sleeping there or something. Um, so I met up with my mate and there's Aaron Seaton's had a crash. And so his car's broken there, you can see. Get a great view of it all. And uh, whatever the other car was, I think it was a Shane Bike Off car. And is the uh, little rides entertainment area where I actually, we actually hung out a bit the, on the Sunday. Is Senna again? I'm not sure what those cars are. Sounds like, a, sounds like a supercar. Getting ready for the race, I think. And here we are at the hairpin. Or near the hairpin. They're all sounding great. I guess the race had already started, and so I'm just watching them go full speed. <laughs> I think I heard there was that lock up or something. Some more spots. This is uh, after the hairpin. That's a pretty good spot to see. Um, I was actually at this spot when Thomas Randall and Jake Kostecki came together. Um, uh, Jake Kostecki might not be in supercars next year. Uh, that'd be unfortunate. Here we are on Sunday morning, heading in. Uh, yeah, probably go to the paddock. I don't have a ticket for the paddock, yet. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, working out what we're going to do. You come? So, yeah. It'll be $20 or something. So, we'll just put on some sunscreen and so we're watching the GT cars going around. We've got a safety car. 
set him pretty good. And you saw the GT4 one that Paul Morris was driving. I actually need to read that article because I think that it might be interesting. Um, not a lot of spots to sit, though. A few more grand, little grandstand things would have been good. So we're looking at the GT bit. Um, one of the cars was uh, in a crash. So this... Is this the one? No, it might be another one. I think this is the one that had the crash. There's one of the, there's a car nearby, you can hear its alarm was going off, so it took ages for someone to come by and turn it off. But yeah, that one was involved in a crash, so it's, it's out for the rest of the weekend. Not that it had any more chances after that one, so. Yeah, gone around to the other side. Um, because I think the one that actually had the crash that day was uh, further up, you can see. Some blokes having a look at it because it's just happened. There's that car that's out there, you can have a look at it. I may add a photo with it. We had a good look, had a good look at it. Looks pretty good. The GT cars are, I don't, I've heard that they are more expensive to run than a supercar. Um, and so, but they don't look too technically different, really. Uh, yeah, you can see him pulling apart the GT car. It's right up close up look of the GT car. Look at all the all the bits and pieces on it. Can't really see it, but yeah. you can see the peel off's got a little bit of air bubble underneath it. So we're going to have a look at the Aussie racing cars as well because they were, they were busy ahead of their session, I think. So there's heaps of them. So I was pointing out which ones were faster and there was one here where a little kid was in it. And uh, apparently you could scan the barcode if you wanted to jump in it, which was uh, very nice of them to have that, to set up that experience. Uh, I think I'd be way too tall to get into one of those. <laughs> So that's why you don't see Garth Tander and Shaman Yusberg and Chaz Monster jumping in those. Um, but they're obviously lots of little, lots of fun, those little things. And yeah, you can see lots of, see everyone, they're all packed in pretty tight. I'm not brave enough to just waltz into the, into the tents and have a close look and chat with people. I don't, I think uh, there are enough people around that know someone who actually w works with the cars. You got Touring Car Masters. Having a good look. There's lots of great old cars driving around there. Um, the racing's always good too. I made a big fluff of the last ever round for Holden in supercars, but that's just in supercars. You're going to see Holdens on racetracks for the rest of your life. It's not, uh, it's not a big deal. And, uh, you know, you got a VB Commodore there in the Touring Car Masters, Gerard McLeod. And you'll see Stephen Johnson working, getting ready for his next session. Uh, you see in there with the grey hair? That's Stevie J. I would have said hi because he said that people said hi, but I just don't want to bother him. He looked pretty busy there, so I just, yeah, didn't want to. I don't, I don't like bothering the drivers unless they're just uh, doing nothing, which they usually aren't because people know who they are. So yeah, well, we were going closer. I was saying stay back, but obviously there was like marshals and stuff. So I love seeing motorsport in action like this. You see it at Tail and Band, you see it the Adelaide 500, they're just sort of out there in front of you and you go, oh my god. I think they need more volunteers to make that stuff actually work because it's such a different event and you can just walk into stuff by accident. 
And you'll see some of them actually getting out and getting their helmet out. So you got Scott Taylor right there, I'm pretty sure. It's, uh, I think I saw Scott Taylor actually talking to some people and they said, oh, I remember me from such and such and having the conversations with these drivers. Have a look at the defence area. We've got the Army, you've got the Navy, Air Force. Um, I don't know if they really had a much Air Force thing, but obviously they've got the jets that fly across during the day. They don't really have any footage of that because it's a plane that's going a million mile an hour, but... Yeah. Yeah. Definitely impressive machinery. Here's the driver parade on Sunday. See all the all the drivers and me saying nice who each one of them is. <laughs> Waving at all of them. And yeah, some nice cars. You can see who's making a better effort and who takes it for granted than Cam Waters must be. Yeah, everyone loves Chaz. Nick Percat. Because uh, they were on the... Uh, was that Tommy Randall? Chaz and Nick won the Saturday race, and that was unbelievable to see. Could not believe that that was what had happened. I was thinking, surely not. Surely Nick's going to get passed by James Courtney or whoever's behind him. And nah, didn't happen. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, everyone loves Bryce. Lots of people filming stuff. Yeah. Chris Bitter. Chris Bitter. Did we say? Here we go. This is what I have for lunch on Sunday. Oh, you call it lunch. I don't check the time. I just go, I'm hungry, and then I go and eat something. That's how you live your life. Don't worry about what time it is. If you're hungry, have something to eat. So we had a great view of the BMX stuff going on. I uh, got to do a sign up for a survey for um, South Australian Motorsport Board and uh, what events for the future. Came, went back to have a look at the support paddocks because they got these babies running, getting ready for their session. Yeah, we found a good spot in the entertainment complex because uh, we're tired. It was hot. I just wanted to find a spot to sit down. And that was the end of the day. That was, that was where we've been to the end of the day. And then going across to go see the the burnouts and the fireworks and podium. And then here's the Aussie racing cars. Um, I think we went... I don't know what we went back for. I think we'll see in the footage. But I see the Aussie racing cars. Really close up view. You can see some of the guys taking their helmets off and... Stuff like that. It's very interesting watching the end of race procedures and how things unfold for them. You see the Toyota Orion Aussie racing car. It's nice what they do with the different ones. And they don't have any old ones. They have new um, body shapes and stickers for them. Which is cool. You can see the Scotty Taylor, um, well that's the Triple Eight, uh, um, truck, but the trailer behind me. There's the end of that. And there's one that broke down. 
Well, that was it. That's the end of the Adelaide 500. It was a great event. I can't wait to go again. Definitely looking forward to it. I, don't, I haven't bought my tickets yet because I'm running a little bit conservative with funds at the moment. But next year, I will be going to the Australian Grand Prix, so that's my gonna, that's going to be my next um, supercars event that's not a supercars event. It's the Grand Prix. I'll just show as much as I want because it's about the event. It's not about the supercars. I'll definitely talk through the process of, because I'm obviously not from Melbourne, I'm from Adelaide, talk about tickets, talk about accommodation, talk about um, how we went about um, getting ourselves to Melbourne and things like that and my thoughts on the whole experience of going to Melbourne because I haven't I've never been to Melbourne as an adult so that'll definitely be a very interesting um, thing for me to talk about and hopefully it's interesting for you guys um, but yeah that's the Adelaide 500 I hope this video does it for you I'm just here to show you the fan experience this is what it's like on the ground level walking around all day all right see you next time bye bye